What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 12, loads to get through today as we're 14 games away from the conclusion of the second Premier League season, uh, right now 9 points off Manchester United leading the way but only 4 off the top 4 and at home to stay in the race for a Champions League place today, but after no wins in 6 in the Premier League, haven't won since December, we really need to turn it around today, so loads of big games in the league, plus we'll have the last 16 in the FA Cup against Spurs as Max Aaron will return to Dorset and our first game is Brentford away at the GTEC. Big game here after no wins in six Premier League games. Trying to respond in West London. Come on, you cherries. 11 to go before the break. Still tied at 0-0 here. And whilst the draw away against a good Brentford side isn't ordinarily a bad result. Go on, Cunha. Oh. We, oh, hang on. No, it's going to be claimed by David Raya. We need a win, man. We haven't won a single Premier League game in the calendar year. Yeah, we had wins against Sheffield Wednesday and Shrewsbury Town, but that was FA Cup games, which were bankers. This is a really important game here, man. Seriously, I, I have to say, I think in today's episode, we're going to know whether we've got any chance whatsoever of a European place, let alone a Champions League place. If we can't get, I'd say, at least four wins today, I don't think we're going to make it, and certainly not top four. Born with tricked y'all, you know. We, uh, we we tricked you. We had that amazing winning run at the, the start of the season for a brief period of time. I say brief, it was one game week. We were actually on top of the league. Yeah, art of deception. We were never really that good. And the injuries we've had, the sale of Max Aaron's on deadline day, adding to the challenge as Brian and Buemo makes it to... I don't think we're going to do it. I really don't. I'm not, I'm not throwing in the towel so early into, uh, into the, today's episode, let alone the business end of the season. But there will still be 13 games after this. It is still going to be incredibly congested. But when is that next win going to come from? Because I say it all the time. When you go for a barren run like this, you need an easy win. You need an easy game to get you back on your feet. But there are no easy games in the Premier League. Evident in this run. It's going to be no wins in seven. I cannot get it sorted, man. Oh, that's cool. Um, straight after the game, uh, Sporting Lisbon and Galatasaray pulled out of the deals for uh, Mark Travers because I, I want to keep him in England if I can. And looks like we're going to get him to Leeds United as their potential successor uh, for Ilian Melier. So, uh, yeah, we'll. Uh, is it? It's not Ilian Melier, is it? That doesn't sound right. Ilian, is that right? Ilian, not Ilian. My mistake. But um, anyway, uh, three more scouts to go today. See what we got. Well, I am going to give a scholarship to Jay Swift, who continues to look really good, and I love the name as well. And I must say, this young goalkeeper, I've, I've struggled to find youth goalkeepers for the first time in one of my career moves this year, but this guy looks really good. Joshua Park uh, looks, looks very good indeed. One mil valuation already with some solid potential, it seems. And some decent young Scottish players here. Going to do the final month on Arthur Cowan. I, I don't know whether you guys are saying, but I always feel like from month five to month six, that's when I see a major potential downgrade in some players. So I'll give him one more month and see how he looks after that. And unfortunately, America has just not worked out for me this year. But these three could still be all right. Continuing with Victor Watson, I just want to see what official position he is. If it's CM... Uh, we can change into CB and that'll be an overall spike. But for now, he'll stay in the youth scouting. So the academy now looking like this on the back of those two young English lads making the academy. Um, first, first goalkeeper. How bizarre is that? It's taken me almost two full seasons to get a youth academy goalkeeper. Normally, I've got like five in three months. But uh, it is pretty solid, to be fair. Already 61 overall. The positioning is always like I always find one of the goalkeeping stats is always really low and off balance to the other ones. But uh, it is pretty solid, to be fair. If Travis is going to go... Might have his replacement there at the academy. But um, yeah, still still a pretty decent youth squad. But of course, the standout still being Lee Wynn. I don't want to take him off that defensive wideback development plan until the strength gets to at least 70, I would say. Right, following game. Brighton at home in a South Coast derby. As we continue to fall down the table, I've got to gamble on this. Kirkes back in the lineup, even though he's not fully fit for this one. Desperately need a win after nine in our last seven Premier League games. Let's try and put it out against a South Coast rival. Come on, you cherries. Yeah, I literally never normally play players with a knock um... oh, but in this case we're just scrambling on defense and just all over the place the, the organization there was completely non-existent I mean it was like a teenager's bedroom like there is literally I mean what what is going on red and black shirts just chasing after the ball no more marking Jao Pedro and it's one no I, 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 I I'm finished like, at this point, I, I feel like we're finished, man. I, I cannot get this sorted. The run of games without a clean sheet is going to continue. The run of wins 
Uh, running games like a win is probably going to continue. I just, I don't know what to do. I do know what to do. Spurs in midweek in the cup. We're going to get battered. Absolutely battered. Or will we? Can you with the instant level up? 1-1. One, one. Oh, we can turn this game on its head. We can turn this second half of the season around. We've got to string some results together. As Acuna is really in the mood out there. Aggressive. That's the best way to be. Wonderful ball. Solanke heads it just over the bar. It's coming. It's coming. That first win is surely coming. We just need to stay positive, man. Feeling like the Pistons in that lost streak, but we know that win is coming. We just got to remain optimistic. It's funny, Cunha on the ex Cherry Lewis Cook. As he holds on to it well, he's been our best player out there today, as he so often is. See you, Milos. Someone get on the end of this. Solanke, what a save. Rebound. Yes, Dominic Solanke. When you're struggling, you need a bit of luck. And we've just got it. Dom turns in his own rebound. Boom of lead. Sometimes you just need a little bit of luck when things aren't going your way during a spell of time. Dan Neal has been brilliant. Brought him in for Tyler Adams today. And he's done well. Cunha says, Dom, off you go. Come on, mate. You've got to have more pace than Lewis Dunk. I've got more pace than Lewis Dunk. Get in. Brace for Dom. Set up by his bro Cunha. Bournemouth are going to return to winning ways. Come on, don't throw away another goal. Come on, come on. Yeah, good block. Vinny and friend group. And as NATO finds his namesake, that is going to do it. Man, the difference that Milos Kerkes makes to a team. Games played in the Premier League without Kerkes in 2025, seven. Wins, zero. Games played with Kerkes in the Premier League in 2025, played, one. Win, one. I'm going to say he made all the difference, but he was still important to us getting that victory. But none more important than Dominic Solanke. Bagging that brace alongside Matthias Cunha. Our two players of the year combined for the goals. Bournemouth have finally, finally got a win in 2025 in the Premier League. Thank the Lord for that. And following that, as you see, Mark Travers is going to join Leeds in the summer for £6 million. And Chelsea win their first major on it in the Mauricio Pochettino era, beating Man City in a Carrick Cup final. Uh, following game is the FA Cup last 16 host of Spurs, aiming to reach the quarterfinals the first time in the save as Max Ahrens returns to Dorset. Come on, you cherries. This is a really interesting thing, by the way, but can I just say, how much better does the Spurs kit look with white shorts as well? Like, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I don't mind too much when a team deviates from the original shirt, shorts, socks, kind of try pattern, if you will. Um... You know, sometimes Manchester United have worn, you know, black socks, sometimes white socks, sometimes red socks. But for Spurs, you know, they, they, they often would wear navy shorts, but they're so much cleaner, I think, all white. You know, all white to me looks... Oh! So much nicer, you know. So much nicer. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. The Solanke almost fires in the opener. Just wide the post. I just really like Spurs' look this year. It's really aesthetic. I've always wished EA could add that to that game. You know, if you see it in real life sometimes, you know, a team will change their sock colour, for example, if they're, if they're matching. Oh, touch! If they're matching with the opponent, they'll go from, like, black socks to white socks, for example, depending on who they're facing. But anyway, great start from Bournemouth. And Dominic Solanke gets his second in two. Okay, all right, listen, we've just had a massive win. If we can follow it on with our progress into the quarterfinals, maybe, just maybe, the tide will begin to turn in Dorset. Wow, this game has had very little going on. There's just over 10 minutes to go. We're still leading by one as Rico Henry tackles the Swede and gets it back. And hold on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Um... Bournemouth have, uh, have never reached the semi-finals of the FA Cup, by the way, for those curious. The highest they've ever got is the quarter-finals. So we wouldn't be setting history. We'll be equaling history if we can hold on to this. There's five to go. This will wrap it up. Bournemouth are heading to the FA Cup quarter-finals for, I believe, just a second time in club history. And surprise, surprise, it's that man again, Dominic Solanke, who's leading us to the last day. Like buses in England, you wait so long for one and then two come along at once. I don't know how many times I've used that joke, but it's still so applicable. The Cherries waited so long for a win and then get back to back. 
as we pull off the cup set, dump out Postacoglu side and ruin Max Aaron's homecoming to Dorset. So into the semi-finals uh, from the, sorry, the, the quarterfinals. I always get the rounds mixed up. Into the quarterfinals, which is Bournemouth's joint best finish in club history. Tram here, Rovers are going to be joining us, and we'll uh, we'll do all the rest of the rounds together, which I believe will be coming on this Wednesday, and we'll see the draw directly afterwards, and we'll have the tie today as well. FA Cup quarterfinal. Ah, oh, <laughs> pits us away at Anfield. Everton take on Watford, Tranmere take on Burnley, Chelsea versus the Saints, and we've probably got the toughest tie we could have had. Liverpool away at Anfield. Right, following game, and a massive one to look for our third win in a row, but a huge test against the title-chasing Manchester United at Old Trafford. I'll take a point here away in the northwest. Come with you, Cherries. So, second half again. Still tied at 0-0, as things stand, getting what I want. Which is that point away at Old Trafford. Interestingly enough, you would have seen the pre-game lineup. Manchester United have got both their young English wingers who are out on loan right now back in the team. Greenwood's on the right and Sancho's on the left. And uh, I must say, as a handball there, I must say since leaving Manchester United, they're, they're both doing really well out on loan so far. Early days for Sancho at Dortmund, of course, but scored the opening goal in their 2-0 win over PSV in the week in the Champions League to send them through to the quarterfinals. Nice to see him trying to rebuild some confidence there. And as for Greenwood, well, out on loan in Madrid right now with Getafe. As Tyler Adams levers one and puts it just wide. Trying to put the, uh, the off-field incidents behind him, if you will. As he's currently doing very well in Madrid with Getafe. And I think the Liga chief actually came out and said, we want Mason to stay in Spain. You know, he's a very good young talent. Um... And he's doing very well in uh, in La Liga as well. It'll be very interesting to see. I must say, very interesting to see what happens with the pair and when they come back. You know, J J Jaden Sancho, will he, will he try and recapture this form at Dortmund with Manchester United? And finally get it sorted there? As Neto makes a great save on Rasmus. And more interestingly, what will Manchester United do with Mason Greenwood? I haven't really touched on this in my videos because it is a very tough thing to talk about as Neto makes another good save. And uh, I don't want to give my personal opinions on it, but it's going to be interesting to see what Manchester United do. Would they say no? He's a homegrown talent. He's still a really good young player. At one point, he had one of the best young talents in uh, in European football uh, before all the uh, all the things surfaced. Um, and we'll keep him, or will they say no? There's just too too much with him, too much baggage, I suppose, if you will. And uh, we'll uh, we'll sell, get whatever we can, and uh, cut ties altogether. It's going to be very interesting to see. What Manchester United do with that situation, how they handle it long term. We see what they've done short term by loaning him out, but he's still their asset. What are they going to do with him long term? Yeah, I have my own opinions on uh, on Mason Greenwood. They're personal opinions, and I think they should be kept that way. I think so. So many people have given their their weighted opinions on this, and and listen, you know, social media has enabled everyone to shout from the rooftops exactly what they believe on every single issue. But at the end of the day, I I, I think certain things should remain private. I think. Certain opinions should should remain personal. Mine do. You know, I'm sure some people would, would be surprised to learn what they are, but at the end of the day, they're, they're still personal opinions. And uh, I, 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 there's just been so much talk about it. And, and so, so many people, you know, give, giving their beliefs on it and their opinions. At the end of the day, it's, it's for the club to decide. It's for the club to decide, and I think people should let the club do what they think is best. Anyway, goal is draw away at Old Trafford. I said I would take the pre-game, and I certainly will now as well. Tough run for Bournemouth, but now no defeats in our last three. An incredible draw here away against the title-chasing side. That's a, that's a good point now. And following the game, we do see a bit of bad news. Marcus Tavernier coming to me and saying, Boss, got to be honest with you, I think we know getting games starting down with my career. I want to get away and make a fresh start somewhere else. Please let me leave so I can get chances to play. Bit of a shame now, because I like Marcus. He's he's a really solid player, very technical, as you know, one of the left boot. But unfortunately, just too many players in a similar position. And, and since we signed Jack Clark, he's become first choice. And same with Cunha coming in this year. Really, I can only get him in off the bench. So yeah, Tav's going to leave in the summer. And I'm, I'm okay with that. This will be best for all parties, I think. Because we should receive quite a decent chunk of money for him. Aston Villa, I like this move as well. Putting in a bid, 24.1 mil. I think I can get 30. I think I can get 30 as a player in the prime of his career. 25 years old. It's crazy. He's only 25 years old. And say, you feel like he's been around forever. We'll see. Um, he, uh, he's a very good player. But 30 mil, I would say, in this market, adjusted for inflation, homegrown, trained in the nation, I, I think with the English tax, this 30 mil is a really realistic bid.
Right, next up, Liverpool at home in a dress rehearsal of the FA Cup quarterfinals, trying to get back to any ways here in the Premier League, where the three points will put us back in the European place. Come on, you cherries. Oh, that's a bad foul. And I wonder if Diaz is going to... Yep, it's a second yellow, and Luis Diaz is off. Now, he got a yellow card earlier for a tackle on Pedro Neto. Really early doors, and that is a second yellow. Loses the ball and then dives it on Frendry. That is a clear yellow card. And thus, two yellows makes a red, and Liverpool are down to 10 men, half an hour in. What an opportunity we've got now to get ourselves a huge scalp here. And Diaz will also be suspended, I believe, for that FA Cup quarter final as well. So, massive, massive bonus there as well. <laughs> very, that's a collector's item right there in Crewman. You very rarely see two yellow cards making a red. That might be the first time I've had it happen all throughout FC24. Problem is, this is Liverpool, and even with 10 men, they're still going to be very hard to beat. But what it is going to do is put Andy Robertson on an island because there's no Luis Diaz to help out now, which means that practically all of our attacks are going to come down that right hand side. Just like this one, which is worked into the middle, and Solanke scores against his former team. Cherry's in front. So 18 minutes to go. Almost there, so it's kind of a big scout. That Luis Diaz red card has really sort of gifted us these three points. Still had to get the goal through Solanke, but since then, no, no problems. But again, for Liverpool, not making adjustments to their team after the red card to Diaz, leaving so much space down at right-hand side. Which means that, yeah, okay, so down his left, for example, we might struggle to break him down. But we know if we can drag Robertson forward, it's going to be a massive, massive gap left in behind. So that's what we want to do. We want to drag Robertson forward and say, come on, come out, come meet me. And then we can play in behind him. And, and there's going to be tons of space. So Liverpool, the way they press, there's going to be so many openings in the middle of the park as well. And that's going to leave space to run in behind. Cunha doubles up and it's game over. Bournemouth back to winning ways and it's now going to be no losses in four and three wins in four. The Cherries after a tough run are finally back to their best. And as Tav does agree to go to Villa Park for £30 million, pounds, it's a good sale that, really realistic as well I would say. Following game, FA Cup quarter final and a chance to make history for Bournemouth and reach the final four of the competition for the first time in the club's history. Liverpool away at Anfield in a reverse fixture, massive clash here. We'll need to do something special to put it out of the bag and make Wembley. Come on, you cherries. And Liverpool, as always, opting with uh, Kelleher in goal, their cut goalkeeper. Can I, can I say, is Kelleher one of the best like cut goalkeepers in uh, in world football right now? Is that is that all right for me to say that? Like, am I allowed to make that claim? I know it sounds really bold, but I think he's possibly the best backup goalkeeper, best cut goalkeeper in, in well, at least European football. As, as bold of a claim as that is, I'm going to stand by it. Do you know why? If you look at his record, if you look at his record, it's unbelievable. His win ratio is extraordinary. His final wins to losses is just ridiculous. Uh, that is a really bold claim, but Liverpool fans will probably agree with me here. <laughs> I think Keller is one of the best cup goalkeepers, deputies if you will, to the normal number one in European football. His record is phenomenal. Because the thing is, it sounds like a big claim. But, um, I mean, who, who, who do you say, if not Kelleher? Like, who, who do you say is the, the best deputy goalkeeper? Let's, let's start with the Premier League, if not Kelleher. Who do you pick? I mean, I'm sure there are some names you could throw out. Dubravka? I mean, I think Ortega has, has been good in the limited minutes we've seen for, for Man City as well. Um, but when Keller has been trusted... Both EFL, EFL Cup finals, you know, including the... Uh, I mean, he's got a great record in shootouts as well, lest we forget to. And he's just made a good stop there on uh, Dominic Solanke as well. I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a bold claim. It sounds it sounds mental when you say it, Kelleher being the best backup goalkeeper in European football. But then again, well, well, who, who would it be? If not Kelleher, who, who, who would you pick? His, his record and his, uh, his, his evidence... In the games where he's been chosen, his record in shootouts as well in particular, speak for himself. As once again he denies Solanke and keeps it goalless. Already off to a flying start here at Anfield. What can I say? Kelleher lives for cup football. He's, he's fantastic. And Arsenal fans, I know what you're going to be saying. What, what about our lad Ramsdale? No, 100% agree, but the problem is it's only been one season. You know, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to judge after just one year 
where he's not been your undisputed number one. Kelleher has been deputy for Allison throughout, well, I think his entire career so far, hasn't he? So, yeah, it, it, it's too, too early to tell. And obviously with Ray on loan, we don't know if we'll come back next season or not. And after the uh, heroics in the week against Porter, I'm sure they'd, uh, they'd love for him to return permanently. Even so, still 0-0 here, despite the fact we've been a better team. Alex Scott bends one from range and puts it just off target. Liverpool have not really tested me at all. Second half to begin, if I, if I keep pushing, I feel confident I'll get that opener. And as things stand, I feel, I feel confident of keeping Liverpool at bay as well. They've not really pressured me at all. God, who would have thought in an episode where I touch on Mason Greenwood, the biggest talking point in controversy will be who I believe the best backup goalkeeper in the world is. It's extra time at Anfield, still nil no. I haven't made a sub yet, I'll need to in a moment because my players are starting to get a little bit tired out there. Oh, that could have gone anywhere. Endo can only divert it behind for a uh, goal kick. But I think this is going down to pens, you know. Into the final minute. Can we win this late in extra time? Kirkez, no. Dispossessed by Carvajal. And that is going to do it well. As long as we can survive this last attack. Which we will. Jake agrees with the tackle. And that is going to do it. No time for a counter. And it's Pens at Anfield and a chance for Kelleher to extend his phenomenal record in shootouts. Hopefully, for my case though, I'm wrong. And we do get ourselves through to Wembley. And the FA Cup semis for the first time in club history. Shootout will decide whether that's the case or not. Now, I'm not feeling confident. We were knocked out by Leicester. Oh, NATO on Pens in the EFL Cup quarterfinal. Is it going to be deja vu? Dominic Solanke missed in that shootout. Scores in this one. Redemption for the number nine. Mo Salah with the trademark run up. He chips it in, cool as you like. And Liverpool are back on level terms. But for how much longer? Well, maybe a little bit. Jack Clark denied. And Soberslide gives them their first lead of the shootout. When I miss one side, I go to the other. Hammer Traore is going to do this for me. Top left. Kelleher goes the right way but can't keep it out. He's made one save. Can he make any more? Cody Gakpo also scores. Philip Billing to go top left. It's the Great Dane. Is denied. And Kelleher's unbelievable record looks set to continue. Who said fever's not realistic? Endo denied by NATO. We're still breathing. We're still breathing, but it's on life support right now. Sinistera looking to bring us back into it. Just missed the top left, but I'm going to stay that way. Louise to extend it. Does just that. Bournemouth still breathing. It goes to sudden death. NATO versus Pedri. Saved. And a chance for us to make it through from the brink. Tyler Adams, the American to send us into the semis for the first time in club history. Bournemouth Football Club are into the final four. From the brink, they battle back and Bournemouth are going to Wembley and into the semis for the first time ever. Oh my goodness gracious me, it was such a tough game. Very, very few clear-cut chances, if you will. So in the end, I think the spot kick's probably the appropriate way of setting it. And in the end, it's the American with the cool head. As Liverpool, I'd say who were the favourites, have been dumped out. Burnley knock out Tramier Rose. Watford, an EFL side, is still remaining. They're in the final four. The question is, who will we face? Either the Hornets, the Clarets, or one of Chelsea or the Saints. We'll do one advance, and this will do it. Semi-final, where Bournemouth will be taking on... Chelsea in the final four. Watford versus Burnley. And we'll take on Pochettino's Blues, who just won the EFL Cup as they'll be going for a domestic cup double. Pochettino's side at Wembley. Bring them on. And just before we do the scouting updates, unfortunately, we have two youth player unsettled emails. It's the, uh, the French lads, uh, Antoine and Aubert who both want pro deals. Now Antoine uh, is one of our best prospects, so he's definitely going to get a pro deal. And where's Aubert? Oh, there he is, the, uh, the striker. 
we'll give him one uh, as well. We haven't actually got that many strikers, to be fair. So it's nice to have one in the academy who looks pretty solid. Thank God it's not Lee. Lee continues to be patient. That's what we love, man. The teenager showing that uh, that maturity there. So three more scouting updates. Well, we will continue the scouting on these four youngsters here. And from Scotland, whilst Arthur Cohen has had a slight potential downgrade, it's still really good. And after six months, it's unlikely to get any worse than 83 to 89. So obviously... That is more than good enough to make my academy. Quite excited about this lad, Ben McKenzie as well. But I'll uh, continue scouting just for now. And America is finally starting to wheel me some decent young talents. Um, this lad looks very good indeed right at the bottom here. Gabriel Jones, already a 1.1 mil mark evaluation. We'll continue scouting just for now. Victor Watson, unfortunately, is actually already a CB. So he wouldn't have an overall spike even if we did convert a position. So we'll do one more month on him and see if that potential range drops because it is still at the highest 90. I always like the highest to be around 92. Even so, uh, so the academy on the back of those two pro deals now looks like this. Of course, Lee still the best prospect. There are still some really, really decent young players here. I'm really excited about George Sh you know, the nephew of Billy Sharp. I really like that. And um, yeah, a few players still looking really, really solid in here. And it looks like one of our young goalkeepers, whose third choice here, is going to leave to Birmingham on a free. Don't mind that at all. And I don't think he's got much of a ceiling here. So whilst Travis is going to go and NATO's in his final years, I don't think he's going to get much better news right now. 24 summer Canada. How are the young French lads, by the way? What are their, uh, what are their potentials? It's the winger and the striker. There's Noah. Exciting prospect. About what we expected. And as for the young French forward, he is showing great potential. So we're under the loan list and, uh, and try and get him loaned out. Right next up, struggling Saints in a South Coast derby. Aiming to keep the unbeaten run going. Get ourselves back into a European place for a win here in Dorset. Big clash for both teams. Opposite ends of the table. Come with you, yeah, Finally, the tide has turned in Dorset. I'm not going to say it's been all because of Kirkes, But clearly he's made a massive difference coming back in from the injury. As he finds Scott, and he might get an early assist as well, as Alex Scott fires in the opener and does get an early assist as the youngster gets us in front. Yeah, this is this is what we need, man, because it shows you the overpower of the form. And I know I mentioned it a lot, but it's like when you, when you are struggling, you've got to break out of it as soon as possible because the longer it goes on, the harder it is to bust out of a barren run of form. But when you string like two or three wins together... You feel like you can beat anyone. We went to Old Trafford and claimed a point. We beat Liverpool back-to-back, -back, albeit in the last game for a shootout. But it just goes to show you the overpowered as a form. When things are going well, things are going really well. When things are going bad, well, you know the saying. When it rains, it pours. As Solange pegs it across. And Cunha could have made it too. Big block by Saleta Sar and cleared away. Easy, easy, easy. Is that a pen? Oh, man. Well, I've been praising Milos Kerkes for his return to form after returning to the lineup, but that is a. Uh, oh, it's, it's one of those where like, you're trying to block the pass or the shot, and the follow through catches the man. I can see why it's given, it's just frustrating, is. Oh, what a pen from Carlos Alcaraz. NATO goes the right way, but I like the shootout heroics. Can't get anything on that one there. That is one of the best pens you'll ever see, that right in the top, in the top corner. And Neto at full stretch still. Can't even get a fingertip on it. Even so, Southampton back on the will turn from the spot. 1-1, one, one, and this will be a really, really disappointing slip-up. Cunha to Solanke. Now Scott. There's a man out wide during Kirk. I see Clark. Can I get it to him through the gap? Yes, we can. Perfectly weighted. Yes! And Dominic Solanke restores the lead. Excellent hold-up work from Jack Clark. And Dom gets another. Bournemouth back in front. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Brilliantly read by Scott. And Solanke takes his time and smashes in. His second and our third. Alex Scott out there has had one of those games where he is just absolutely unstoppable. He's one of those players for me where sometimes he's amazing, sometimes he's a little bit subpar. But in this game, he showed his full array of talent. A goal and an assist after that interception. Bournemouth 3-1 up on the south coast in the derby. And that is going to do it now. The unbeaten run extends and we're back in a European place. Right, let's squeeze in one more game today. Spurs away in North London where once again we need to win to get ourselves back in the European place. It's such a tight league table though. We can finish anywhere from 1st to 11th. Come on, you cherries. Charleston across. Ah. Oh. Sorry, I just I just stopped there because that's a that's a bizarre goal. Take a look at us on, on the replay. What just happened here? So Richarlison gets dispossessed and then <laughs> I don't I don't really know what happened there. Friend group hits the deck and <laughs> and then Tyler I think it was Tyler jumps over him 
and it was just rolled across and an easy finish for James Madison. I mean, that is... Well, look, so, sometimes you've got to hold your hands up and say, I should have done better. Sometimes you think, I haven't really been helped out there by the animation, have I? Even so, Spurs in front, and I think Stan going to be our first loss in quite a while, to be fair. But we have won ourselves a free kick right on the edge, and Matthias Cooney's already got one. And I wouldn't be against him getting another. Oh, side net in. Son down the left. Has a man in the middle in Richarlison. He'll cross. It's actually going to come to Kudasensky at the far post instead. And the Swede doubles up as Spurs make it to Cunha. Solanke. Oh, Pedro and Ata. Oh, I just couldn't get a shot away. A wonderful skill. Just couldn't execute. I feel like that's been Pedro and Ata season in a nutshell, really. Yeah, Spurs are penned. Oh, my God. It's the third time it's happened this season. This is ridiculous. Clearly something's happened with the patches because this was not happening at the start of FC. It's the third time it's happened for me in the season. Spurs trying to play out from the back. Granted, we're pressing really hard and putting them under pressure, but it's the third time it's happened in the season. Saw with the back pass to Vicario and he just doesn't seem to know well, he's right on the goal line. Misses the ball trying to clear it and it just trickles in. It's a route back and a lifeline, but some, something's going on here with the patches. Because this was not happening at the start of FC. I've now had three in the same season. Well, in the end, Vicario, the most relieved man in North London, because his glaring error doesn't cost his team the points. Spurs hold on to the 2 1 victory and end Bournemouth's nice little unbeaten streak, which means with eight games to go in the Premier League, we're still outside of a European place, but based on how congested it is right now, I mean, we're still technically in a title race as well. So, yeah, let's keep it in perspective. The season is far from finished. But that'll do it for today's episode of the Realistic Career, guys. So, a big fan of watch. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't enjoyed this episode, please drop a like. Myself, you all have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode, playing most of our remaining eight games, trying to get back in the top seven. And we'll have history, Bournemouth's first ever FA Cup semi-final, as we take on Chelsea, the new favourites at Wembley. Have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.